Hello everyone, Ray Waldo here, the Bishop of Technology. Uh, check our website, raywaldo.com, for any comments or questions. I don't normally do a lot of support on YouTube, so please log in to raywaldo.com and leave your comments there. Today, we're looking at the Kindle Fire HD that just came out, and I'm comparing it to uh, several other devices that I have handy. And uh, yeah, this one just went off. Uh, this is the uh, Nook uh, tablet that's uh, now getting a little bit old. Uh, it's, it has the lowest uh, quality video, uh, a little bit grainy if you see it in comparison with the, all the others. This is the original uh, Kindle Fire, uh, a really nice device once it's rooted. Uh, my wife has used this for uh, ever since we got it, uh, since it came out. I, and the only problem I've had was that the power adapter was a little bit weak and it's gotten a little bit loose there. So you've got to be careful about how you uh, plug it in to power it up. This is the NT, I, I'm sorry, the, NT, the, uh, uh, the new uh, HD, Kindle Fire HD. And this, of course, is the uh, Google Nexus 7. And uh, as you can see, they're all relatively about the same size, but uh, somehow it just seems like uh, there's, there's a lot of differences here. So I, I want to talk about the, the uh, Kindle HD, so we'll talk about it here. And uh, first off, I've had a few hours to work with it and play with it, and uh, most every application that I've tried has worked well. I have no problems with any of the applications. Uh, everything seems to work really good of the things that are available. Uh, that's probably my biggest complaint is that it, uh, it doesn't, uh, it's not an Android tablet. It is an Android tablet, but it's not a full-blown Android tablet. It is, it is the uh, Amazon's application of an Android. So there's uh, some of the positives that I found. It, the video is very, very good. Uh, if you're into watching videos and uh, uh, that kind of thing. I didn't mean to do that. Um, that's that's one of the problems that I have with this device is that it just doesn't, uh, it's not intuitive. But I'll talk about that in just a moment. But videos, uh, it interacts really well with the Prime. They give you a month of free Prime video streaming and it interacts with that very well. Uh, you can stream those things. The quality of the video is very good. The audio is very good. Uh, the uh, just it just seems awkward to me because I'm more accustomed to the the standard uh, uh, Android type uh, interface, and this is is just a totally different interface. So if you want to go to the web, you got to find a, an option up here for the web, and uh, this is this is a nice application that allows you to find things. Of course, if you want to go to the number one website on. Uh, technology, then you just click on whatever you... These, I didn't add those bookmarks, they just automatically came up, which is kind of cool. And, and it does seem like the Silk browser for major sites uh, is very good. I assume they're probably caching those sites and they, they don't, they're not smart enough to know that they ought to be caching RayWaldo.com. But <laughs> I'm facetious. But uh, the normal browsing does seem to be pretty pretty clear, uh, pretty quick. Uh, it does seem to do pretty well. Uh, I'm, I'm just not real impressed with uh, this browser because it is a caching type browser as opposed to a direct uh, browser like Chrome. And uh, so uh, the caching slows down sites that they don't cache. So it's just a matter of, you know, if you're looking at Google or something big, some big sites, then yeah, those are going to be uh, very fast because they cache them very quickly. Okay, so uh, back to, uh, if we can figure out uh, the home button. Okay, back to the home button. Uh, so really what this device seems to be, well I know it is, designed specifically for, is for the consumption of, of uh, Amazon's media. They want to sell you media. So they're basically making this device as a loss leader and uh, maybe not as lost totally, but uh, they're not making a lot of money on it uh, by most people's est estimation. But it is a, a loss leader of type, and uh, the, the idea is that once you get the device, that you will be kind of tied into, an, uh, in, into Amazon and buying their, their books and their videos and their audio. 
and those kinds of things. You can do other things. Uh, Hulu Plus seems to work, I guess. I don't have Hulu Plus, so I can't really check it. But uh, everything that I checked, uh, games seem to work okay. They're, you know, they it seems a little bit slower than I would have thought. But uh, these action games seem to work fine. Uh, Skype seems to work. And this is an excellent game. This pool game that I have is really great. It works well. Uh, everything that I tried seems to work well. Uh, Netflix does work well. Uh, everything seems to, to do what it's supposed to. But you're limited to just the items that are on the Amazon App Store. So uh, is this a, a nice interface? Not for me. I don't like it at all. I really don't like this this uh, type of interface. I want to just be able to point out the things that I want and have them ready available to me right now. Uh, like this, you know, these are the things that I use, and, and they're available, you know, so I can click them right away. I don't have to search for what I'm looking for. So I don't like this, but if you've never used any of these smart devices or anything before, then maybe this is a good good interface because you know it's simple you can't go wrong you, you just thumb around until you find what you're looking for and then you click on that and you know that's that's what you see so maybe that's okay for a, a non-user someone that has never used a smart device or maybe even a computer before this would probably work really well for them uh, I don't like it at all uh, it, it may be that uh, they're designing it this way is, is less of a positive than a negative, in my opinion, because so many people now have smartphones, and I, I, an iPhone is, is ubiquitous. You know, I mean, everybody has an iPhone or an Android or something, you know, and this just works totally different than all of those. So I don't know that that's a smart thing, but anyway, that's the way it is. So uh, among the cons, that is the, the number one thing. This is a dumb interface, in my opinion. Uh, it's not intuitive if you've ever used any other device. It's just not intuitive at all. Uh, there's no Play Store. You can't get to the the uh, uh, to the Google Play Store unless you root this device, which is uh, right now tenuous. The people who have rooted the the device, uh, some of them had pretty good success, but this is very immature in the development of rooting. So you're really risking a lot trying to root the device. Uh, I would recommend that you not root it if you buy it. Uh, not now. Wait a little while. Uh, there's, there's, uh, you can, there is an option under the device, settings device that you can turn on unknown sources, but if you do, you know, I haven't really tried how do you get those those uh, applications to, to fly. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe a launcher would, would really help if you could sideload a launcher program and get it to do that. But with original Kindle Fire, even if you loaded a launcher on, it would always default back to the Amazon launcher as soon as, you know, as, soon as it could. So I don't know that that's a good alternative. Uh, the routing options, again, are very, very tenuous. There is an option under settings, security, to turn on ADB, so you can get to the device with ADB, but uh, I don't recommend it right now. The other thing uh, is uh, location services. Uh, it doesn't have a GPS, so it uses only the Wi-Fi location services, which is very, uh, it could be five miles off. Uh, so you can't use it for some location device services. Uh, the wide bezel, I just don't like that. I mean, it just seems like everything is small now. I, I don't like that, that wide bezel. Uh, everything just seems too small for me. I, I, don't, uh, I don't know why they made it so big. And uh, as you can see, the, the display area is probably about the same as the, as the Nexus 7, but it just seems smaller. Look at the difference here when I turn on the Nexus 7. Uh, trying to do two things at once and it's difficult. Uh, okay, uh, here's the displays. And uh, somehow it just seems like there's a lot more, dis if I can see it here, if I can get it where it seems, just seems like the, 
the Nexus has a, a bigger display because it probably doesn't. It, you know, so let's see if we can kind of compare them. Yeah, it is a little bit larger. The display is just a little bit larger on, on the, uh, that side. And uh, it's hard to say. They're both very, very close. But it just seems small because of the wide bezel. Okay, so uh, recommendations. Uh, the first thing that I would recommend is that if you buy this device, that you definitely get the uh, some kind of a cover. I would recommend this uh, micro shell folio by uh, Marware. It's rubber. It just feels rubber. Everything is rubbery. Uh, it uh, it just snaps on uh, very easily. You just put it in there and snap it on, and uh, it's done. And uh, it, it really closes and feels well. That's not large. It's you know it's very comfortable. That rubber feel just gives me a good confidence that you know if you dropped it or something, you'd have a half a chance of saving it. Uh, you can turn uh, this. By the way, that does not open and turn on and turn off the device like the Nexus Seven covers do, or uh, iPad. But you can hook the device underneath here and use it uh, for stand-up uh, like this or you can uh, double it over somehow and there is a rubber band on the back of it that supposedly allows you to use it as a handhold. I haven't found any way that makes that really comfortable too much but you can do it. This is, see that's that's very loose and uh, see how it just kind of flops there. The, the rubber is too soft I guess. Maybe you're supposed to do it. I don't know what you're supposed to do but anyway it doesn't doesn't work well for me but the protection value is very good. It, it, it feels like that would protect it quite well. Okay, so the other thing that I have in opposition to the, the, uh, uh, the device is that they don't include a power adapter. Is that a weird thing or not? They don't have a power adapter in there. They have the USB cord, but no power adapter with this uh, Kindle Fire HD. They say you can use any standard USB adapter, uh, mini USB, mini USB adapter, but it is slow. It is even slower if you use it on uh, a low capacity or your computer. So what they do, they sell you a, a $20 extra. Uh, supposedly it was for sale for $10, half price, but when I ordered it, they didn't give me credit for the $10. They, only, they still charged me $20. But um, this thing will speed up the, uh, the charging. And I know these are the case because it was the same thing with the old Kindle Fire. You had to have a special charger. So, but at least they included it with the other one. This one you've got to pay $20 extra. You've got to pay $15 extra unless you want to take their advertisements on the thing. Uh, several little things that just really pick my... Uh, well, anyway. So, bottom line, if you are uh, a new user and you're consumption-oriented, and you're just interested in movies and books, this is probably an excellent device. I mean, it really is good on movies. And, uh, you know, you get this little, uh, little folio, and you set it up and watch a movie. That's, that's pretty cool, you know. You, you could do that and, and sit and watch a movie and, or in, lay in bed and, and watch a movie or something or, or, you know, stream music or whatever. Those are pretty good things if, if your consumption and your first user if you've been accustomed to using an iPhone, an Android, or something else of that nature, this is going to be kind of weird. I, I just got to tell you, it's kind of weird. Number two, don't try to root it right now. Wait a little while. Get the power adapter. Get the malware folio uh, and, and, and enjoy it for a while. In a few weeks or a month or two months or three months, maybe rooting will be available and uh, pretty uh pretty comfortable to root it. In that case, this may be a fantastic device. I had really decided to send it, send it back, but I guess I'll save it in hopes that maybe rooting will be available and I'll be able to support that for you on my website. Uh, that's still up to debate. If it was me just using this sucker, I would send it to Amazon today. I just don't like it, but that's, that's neither here nor there. My recommendation there's nothing on the market right now that I'm aware of that comes close to the Nexus 7. This thing is fantastic. It is just super intuitive. Google's going to give you everything you need, everything you want. If you root 
the HD. You can't get what you get on the Nexus 7 unrooted. I've got two of these. I gave one to my wife for Christmas and it, neither of them is rooted. I had this one. This one's mine that I got when they first came out and I had it rooted for a while but then I upgraded to the new uh, uh, operating system and I haven't bothered to to root it again. I may later on just to see how it works and be able to support that, but there's really not much reason to root it. It gives you everything Google's got without rooting. So the only real advantage is maybe backup and a few other things, but you still need it. I mean, it's just it's just so cool and it works and has GPS and has everything. I mean, everything works. It's smooth, intuitive. Everything just, it automatically sets up. <laughs> you don't hardly do anything. You just use it and enjoy it. Anyway, that's the Kindle Fire HD in a nutshell. A bad nutshell in my opinion. Alright, uh, my rating, 7 out of 10. See RayWaldo.com for more and uh, I'll have this, this uh, review in text online with a uh, link to the video later on. So, Alright, RayWaldo.com, Bishop Technology. See you later. Bye.